What's going on, everybody? For the second time now, technical difficulties. Uh, welcome back to <laughs> the Browns Beat Podcast. I am Derek, and who are you, sir? Uh, my name is Tristan. Uh, very, very happy, Tristan, uh, as you can tell. Um, before we jump into the Brown stuff, mm-hmm. Derek, you wanted to have a quick little discussion about a uh, potential NFL superstar, Michael Penix. Yeah. Derek, lead the uh, way. So every once in a while, we like to dabble in the college football conversation here. Um, for those of you who've watched us for a while, you remember the Will Levis debates last year um but and, 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 by the way it's not no all i'm gonna say no. is this all i'm gonna say is this i had will levis as a better prospect than bryce young that's a dub for now that's a dub. for now for now for now i'll give it to you i'm confident now. it will okay. be i am confident it will be nevertheless um as you can tell <laughs> we tend to dabble especially in the quarterback conversation um I wanted to talk about last night because last night, or I should say yesterday, college football playoffs, Michigan upsets Alabama 27-20 in overtime uh, because Jalen Milrow don't know how to follow a guard. Uh, And then Texas-Washington was the showdown of all showdowns. Could not wait to watch that. And boy, did it live up to the hype. And I, I just wanted to mention here real quick before we get into the Brown stuff, Michael Penix last night, 29-38, 430 yards and two touchdowns. That doesn't sound crazy other than the yards, but that doesn't sound crazy, right? He was making NFL throw after NFL throw after NFL throw. And I'm not talking easy. I'm talking tough, like hard NFL throws. And um, while I have it up in front of me, uh, I'll just read you. The list of receivers and their yards, right? This shows you how much this dude was spreading the ball out. Romo Duzne, six receptions, 125 yards. Jalen Polk, five receptions, 122 and a touchdown. Jack Westover, six receptions, 60 yards, 59. Uh, Jalen McMillan, five receptions, 58 yards. Jeremy Bernard, three receptions, 48 yards. So... That's, what did I just name you? One, two, three, four, five. Five different receiving targets. And the least amount of yards was about 50 yards. Like, that is insane. That is insane. And I wanted to mention this quickly because, Tristan, what did I tell you last year? Since we've started this podcast, it's always irritated me. Come draft season, people will overreact to the combine stuff and overreact to the measurables or whatever, and they won't look at the in-game performances and how guys are doing. And Michael Penix, in his situation right now, reminds me a lot of a certain quarterback close to home here. Tristan, let's go back. 2017, Miles Garrett, number one overall pick. Who was the quarterback in discussion To possibly go number one to the Cleveland Browns. You are on mute. (laughs) Whoops. Uh, (laughs) Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky, right? Let's, yep, Mitch Trubisky. Who all was in that draft class? Or not everybody, but like the two big names. Oh, uh, well, Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. uh, Those two. So. Let me uh let me tell you a quarterback who is dominating in college football dominates in the first playoff game and if what I believe happens will win a national championship who does that remind you of who does that remind you of well of course you got to think of uh, Mr. Deshaun yeah. Watson yeah Deshaun well actually Derek Deshaun Watson. Just throw that out there. Um, (laughs) I'm just kidding. But I think Michael Penick's college career reminds me so much of Deshaun Watson. Like, the way he's playing, he's playing at an NFL level in college, making plays. And Tristan, I guarantee you, when it comes to 
draft season and when it comes to ranking these quarterbacks. Now, Caleb Williams, I'm not going to disagree with. I'm not going to argue. I do think he is the best quarterback in the class. I know there's people who would disagree with that and say he's whiny and whatever, and he's not that good. He's the number one quarterback in the class. And there, this is a great, this is an all-time quarterback class. I don't know how much studying you've done on it. Probably not a whole lot. Oh, uh, I've done a yeah. decent, like not not to the extent of where mm-hmm. I'll be when eventually the round season mm-hmm. is over. Um, but uh, like, I've I've done a bit of like research on on each guy. Not really a whole lot. Uh, but I, I I know enough to like be able to make somewhat informed decisions yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. I could say, but I, I I of course like I'm sure we'll have another discussion before the draft about mm-hmm. quarterback. Um, it was something we were thinking about talking about in this episode, but we're yeah. gonna hold it off uh, till another future episode. But um, yeah, I, I I yeah, I'm with you, man. This is a stacked a stacked quarterback class. Even guys that are like projected to go projected to go like rounds mm-hmm. two through three like day two day three picks like there are guys that are going to be there that like i mean we we picked up dtr in like fifth what, round the fifth, yep. round fifth round last year um you might be in a situation where you might be able to get a guy like double talented mm-hmm. at that at that position depending on how the draft shakes out mm-hmm. of course but um there's a bunch of, of young talent that could be available. I'm with yeah. you, but um, yeah, it's, wow. yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I want to say this, cause my point in saying this about Michael Penix is not to take away from the other guys. Cause I love, I love this quarterback class and obviously we'll talk about it, but boy, if there was a year out of all the years that the Browns have needed a quarterback boy, Oh boy, do I wish this was it because I think there's probably, honestly, I think there could be three to four franchise changers in this draft. Um, like, I love Jaden Daniels. I obviously have always loved Caleb Williams. Um, you know, and there's a couple others. But I, I just want to say this with Michael Penix, and then I'll shut up. Deshaun Watson in college dominated, was great in the playoffs, won a national title, and was overlooked. Michael Penix this year has dominated, won in the playoffs, and generally, as far as like the Heisman race goes, people have overlooked him. And I just want to say this. Michael Penix will be a stud, star franchise NFL quarterback somewhere. I pray to God it's not the Steelers, because uh, that's a nightmare. But... um and I just see so many similarities and I hope when it comes draft season and all these quote unquote experts, I hope they don't overlook what he's doing right now. And Tristan, you know, they will because this happens every single year, but this guy is going out here and he is throwing NFL throws in tight windows. He's got a cannon. He's the most accurate quarterback in this draft. He's big. Yes, he's older. He's like 24, but this dude's a stud. And how he's not being talked about in like top 10 is crazy. Like, I don't want to get into it, but honestly, today, if you told me Drake May or Michael Penix, ooh, ooh, that's like, I might be leaning Michael Penix. And I know there's people who are going to say that's insane, but I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying. I know we're early. I know this is going to be a long discussion later, but just just keep that in the back of your back of your minds, people. That's all I wanted to say. But anyway, uh, you have anything you want to add on to that before we get into the Browns, Tristan? Yeah, you talked a lot about um, Michael uh, Penix's ability to um, make big time NFL throws. Um, for me, I would say, you know, based off of what I saw against, uh, like his performance against, against Texas, the thing that shocked me, or I shouldn't say shocked me, the thing that impressed me the most, uh, for me was, uh, his ability to quickly process where he was supposed to go with the football. 
in making the right read. Um, there was one play in particular where um, Texas was sending a blitz uh, on the right-hand side, and Penix was in the gun, and, you know, that, like, it was an unblocked guy, essentially, coming right at him, right from the snap. And Penix, like, knew what where he was going with that football as soon as, the, like, before the snap even came. Um he the ball hit his hands and he immediately started running left and he threw to the guy in his flat through to the guy in the flat who was wide open now unfortunately uh the guy in the flat dropped the ball but it was like that was something where it's like okay this guy read pre-snap where he was supposed to go with that football that was not a design play um but he made it mm-hmm. look like one um because of his ability to quickly process like okay that's what I'm seeing right here. I know where I got to go with the football. I got to be able to move and I got to be able to make this throw accurately. It was an accurate throw. Guy just dropped it. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I was very impressed by his performance um, against against Texas. And he certainly is somebody that like if the Browns were looking for a quarterback, he is likely somebody they would land with because, you know, obviously we know Caleb Williams is going one. Drake May is gonna go to maybe um marv might go to it's just it's just how I, I the thing is is like i think the big knock on Penix is gonna mm-hmm. be his age he's 24 coming out um and the thing that i have with this uh in in the browns the, the browns last year have deviated had, had deviated from it um a little bit and like especially the later rounds uh, where they have these age guardrails where they don't draft outside of a certain age because it gives you a leg up in future contract negotiations. Um, you know, we see it with Grant Delpit. They drafted Grant Delpit. He was like 21 when he signed his rookie deal. Um, by the end of it, he was 26. They felt like they could make a three-year deal for him, and um, 25, 26. And after that three-year deal, he could still have another deal ahead of him. Um <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I think that is ultimately gonna gonna plague Penix a little bit um, because by the fact that he's out of like by the time he's out of his rookie deal, you know, think about it, he'll be like twenty nine, thirty. Um, teams are gonna be scared by that. As ridiculous as it sounds, teams are gonna be scared by it. Um, I think it's ridiculous, especially when you consider the fact that you know the world stopped for like two years in college yeah. football, like. I, I think that, you know, I think that it would be ridiculous for people to rule him out because of that, but people will. Um, and, you know, who knows, like, who knows how the rest of this year is going to go for the Browns or, um, you know, what decisions are going to be made in the off season. If the decision is made that we need to move from our current quarterback and, and go for somebody else, um, Penix is absolutely somebody who I would love to see us trade up and and select because I think he's got every measurable that you want. Like physically, he's able to do anything you want. Um, and it's those small things, like getting the ball out of his hand quickly, um, reading the game fast, being able to throw accurately. Um, you know, I, I, I think highly of him. Um, you know, we'll see how it pans out. Because, again, it's one thing f- to do this stuff in college. It's another thing to do it in the pros. So it's possible that we say this stuff now and he ends up not translating. It doesn't transfer. Um, you know, we, we saw it with Bryce Young where, I mean, I expressed to you my concerns with Bryce Young um, that he wasn't he didn't handle pressure well, uh, which is translated, um, you know, um, some other concerns I had with Bryce, uh, you know, they 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 translated, of course, but the strengths that he had of being able to be an accurate thrower and, you know, being able to be, um, you know, calm in a clean pocket and stuff like that. You're just not seeing that in the NFL right now with him. Um, I, I mean, for me personally, I've always thought, you know, quarterback, quarterbacking, a lot of the success is dictated on the environment you you mm-hmm. go into. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, he was a project. 
he was a project. Uh, Josh Allen, he was a project. Lamar Jackson, he was a project. But they went into these environments where, you know, the culture was sound. You were in a winning program and you had the tools around you, the stability around you to be successful. Um, that's where, you know, I think Penix could actually be at an advantage if he gets slighted and taken in the later rounds. I think that Caleb uh, should go to the Bears. I think the Bears should move off of Justin Fields, reset the clock with your quarterback mm-hmm. contract. And not only that, but I think that the Bears, like, they're close, man. Mm-hmm. They're close. That defense looks very solid. Um, you know, I think if they got, you know, maybe a couple of more weapons and, and stabilize the offensive line a bit, you know, Caleb Williams really could go in there and do what CJ Stroud is doing right now. Um, I don't see how it would be impossible. So, um, you know, but regardless, Michael Penix, really impressed with his performance. I'll be excited to see what he does against that, against that Michigan defense. Cause that will be, uh, a way bigger test because we never talked about like the, the results of the CFB. Um, I personally didn't think Michigan or Michigan, sorry, Texas deserved to be in. I'll be honest. I thought that they had too many close Mm. games. Um, I thought that they were not uh, dominant and really in my eyes, the only reason in that game, they kind of got back in it. um, They got a couple of bounces go their way a couple of balls go their way um i i I really didn't think it was that close i thought i thought washington hand handled them and just let them back in the game that's how it felt to me but again we'll see we'll see how we'll see how the the uh final goes that's for sure it'll be interesting i i know we need to move on because we need to talk about the browns because we've been going about 20 minutes but um one thing on a point you said um, Michael Penix, his uh, decision making ability to break down defenses, like you said, is out of this world. I think he is the most pro ready quarterback since probably Joe Burrow, and I think a lot of that is age. And I I don't think that is a bad thing. I mean, I you know you got to understand Penix has gone through a lot. You know, he was at Indiana two ACL surgeries, which is going to be a knock against him, I understand, but the dude is a freak. Like, he is a freak. And another thing, Tristan, that you probably haven't seen a whole bunch of, you saw it a little bit against uh, Texas, Um, his legs, he can move. He is mobile. He can do it. They don't want him to because of his history with ACLs. But get ready, because against Michigan... I, I think they're going to win. I, I think uh, Washington will win. And, uh, you know, it's just crazy. But, I don't know. I'm pumped. He's he's one of these players that I, I can't wait to see their future, right? Because if he lands if he lands in a place with some weapons, oh, boy. Oh, boy. He can come in day one and be a Stroud-type uh, franchise changer, year one. Like, he legitimately can. Yeah, I think that the, uh, you know, the Falcons, I think, would be a good team for him mm-hmm. to go to. I think um, Washington, you know, they got to change their head coach. They got to change their head coach for sure. Um, I agree with you. Washington would be would be interesting for me. I would say, you know, if you're a young quarterback looking to go anywhere this offseason, for me, the Falcons are the number one destination. Um, you've got Kyle Pitts, who's an absolute nightmare mismatch um you know you've got some solid young receivers drake london um you know and then you've got a really good offensive line with a very very potentially great running back in Bijan robinson mm-hmm. um i think that they have a very good template for somebody to just walk in and um you know be able to find success of course they have to change their offensive coordinator because um, or their play caller, their head coach. I'm not sold on mm, Arthur Smith at either. all. Um, you know, so if you get the right guy, though, um, like I imagine like the, the uh, Texans OC, Bobby Slowick, um, he might be a great candidate for that job. Um, you know, because even though it's only been a year with CJ Stroud, you're seeing 
that he knows how to get the best out of CJ Stroud. And, you know, maybe, uh, you know, that's again, this is off season mm-hmm. yeah. talk, but yeah, it's, it's so exciting to see um, some great talent, you know, that, that could be even Tristan, greater in the process. Could you imagine, could you imagine if he ended up on the Seattle Seahawks with all those weapons? Go from Washington to the Seahawks, brother. I mean, they could do it too. That would be a good place. They could do it. They could. They have the Denver pick. So, but anyway, enough. We gotta move on because I could talk all day. I could. T- I could legitimately do mm-hmm. a probably four or five hour podcast on these quarterbacks. I for whatever reason <laughs> don't know why. I just love talking about draft quarterbacks and just who's going to fit and where. It's just so fun to me. Yeah. But yeah, when the Browns season is over, yeah. we got to do uh, a a prospect like pick prospects that we love with each position group and just do a podcast yeah. on it. Um, I I think that would be a really good idea because I'm I'm with you. This quarterback class is special. 